Adams Jr. to the mix, coming over from Eastern Washington, the club that just happens to be in the building this evening. <laughs> well, big play, VA is making college football history tonight at Austin Stadium. Now, we all know about what he did at Eastern Washington, completely dominant performer, but he's done what no one else has done. He decided to prove to himself, prove to NFL scouts, prove to Oregon Duck fans that he's what has what it takes to play ball. He showed up in practice five, won the job in two weeks, and yes, we know him for his ability. He's done it against UW. He did it against Oregon State. But this young man, after talking to him yesterday, he simply oozes with swag. I mean, he's got dude qualities for days. When you look at his comparison against Jeff Lockie, who was the front runner in camp, you just got to look to the experience, the amount of snaps that Vernon Adams has played. He is ready for this, and I think he's going to have an incredible career here. 10,000 passing yards, Yogi. Goodness gracious, 110 TDs in the win loss record. You can't argue with that. 28 and 6. Scott Frost is the offensive coordinator here in Oregon, and the one bit of advice he gave to Vernon Adams was don't try to be some other guys help you out. Well, I think this team is loaded. I think they have more depth. They're the healthiest they've been in the Mark Helfrich era, and a huge reason why is Rolls-Royce. Royce Freeman, he was Pac-12 freshman of the year on offense, an absolute dominant running back in between the tackles. And while this team was lauded because of Marcus Mariota and all the flash and all the sizzle, this is a downhill running attack, and it starts with number 21. He's going to get a heavy dose of the rock tonight. Freeman, first team, Pac-12, led the Pac-12 in touchdown, scored 230 pounds. He is not a luxury automobile. He is a bullet train. And look who he's got alongside, Byron Marshall. They can put him out on the wing to receive the football or run it, Yogi. Well, really dominant performer. Former running back, now playing wide receiver. Love this combination, putting a lot of stress on the defense of Eastern Washington. Welcome back to Eugene, Oregon, set for football this afternoon. A 5 o'clock start here in Eugene. The number seven Oregon Zucks to take on the Eastern Washington Eagles, who are ranked in the top ten of the FCS as well. They've built quite a program there in Cheney, Washington, but a huge assignment today against the Oregon Ducks. With more on Eastern Washington, Lewis Johnson joins us. Well, Kevin, if you're an underdog coming into a hostile environment like this stadium, you better have somebody in your team that can not only bring it on the field, but can also be that glue guy to keep everybody together and believing no matter what happens when you're in that bench area. And for Eastern Washington, Cooper Cup is that guy. Cup told us that they've planned, played in many hostile stadiums before, and playing with a bit of a chip on your shoulder can be a good thing on a day like today. He said, we all know that adversity is going to happen in the football game. That's part of the deal. But coaches have already instilled in them to rise above that adversity. And the most important thing is get out of that victim mentality right away. It was Bull Baldwin who said that he'll need Cup to make a lot of plays on the field today here at Alton, but also keep people in the right frame of mind, composed, no matter what the game situation is. It's uh, Mark Helfrich, who is now in his third year, coming off a season when they won 13 games, including the march to the national championship, eventually won by Ohio State. They had it all rolling for him last year. But wow, trying to replace a Heisman Trophy winner and the best player to come down the pike here at Oregon. That's in tall order. We'll find out as that story is about to unfold here this afternoon. 266 days since that game against Ohio State in the national championship. These players are excited to get back in front of their fans. And the ball is chipped toward the goal line, and it is taken by Byron Marshall. He comes right up the seam. He's at the 30, makes a little wiggle out to the 35, and that's where the Oregon Ducks will go to work just past their own 35-yard line. And here is Vernon Adams using his last season of eligibility, completing his courses at Eastern Washington, and then able to transfer to Oregon with that one more year of eligibility. We had a chance to talk to him yesterday, and he said, you know, I don't know how I'm going to feel. Some days I block it out. Some days I'm real emotional. We're going to find out early on how he handles his emotions going up against his former squad. Adams with two men in the backfield. He'll open up with a run off to the left side, and that's Royce Freeman. Of course, Oregon wants to get off a play about every 11 seconds or so, and so you will see rapid action here this afternoon. Adams on second down, throws off to the flank, and they'll throw to the tight end a great deal. That's Evan Bayless with the catch. Well, that's going to be the thing to watch all evening long. How does Vernon Adams handle the tempo? Marcus Mariota, he was a freak, one of the best players in the history of the Pac-12 Conference, but he had mastery of this system. This is where Vernon Adams needs to grow. Adams is back. He is flushed. He will work to his left. 
He leans to the 50. He's out to the far boundary, and he's across for a first down and into Eastern Washington Territory. Evan Bayless with a nice block downfield to spring him. Well, you can only laugh. And we went back and watched Vernon Adams' games last this morning, last year at Eastern Washington. Then you talk to some of the coaching staff. They said he just has uncanny ability when things break down to find little seams, find little gaps. He thrives when it's a broken play. How about the tempo of Oregon? Is it dissimilar at all from Eastern Washington? The throw to the far side. Man coming free out of the backfield again. It is Royce Freeman. Well, what you love so far is Vernon Adams is his full command. He knows where his reads are. He's gotten to his second read already early on. We'll see if he has to get to his third, but just taking what the defense gives him, and here you go, a couple first downs, and they're knocking on the door. Eastern Washington last year under Adams averaged 44 points a ball game. That was number one in the country. The misdirect. And again, they go to Royce Freeman. Dwayne Stanford has flanked out of here to the near side. Two receivers to the left of Adams. Fakes a handoff, stumbles. Has a man breaking free out of the backfield. And it's going to go for a big game. Tumbling across the 10-yard line is Kanai Benoit. 210-pound redshirt sophomore out of Phoenix, Arizona. And he can fly. And they love what he did in camp. They were seeking that back. Remember Thomas Tyner out for the season. He was kind of that co-starter running back a year ago in their national championship run. Game at 43 on a play. Here's the handoff. touchdown played in a half dozen games last year and you can bet he's going to get more work this year if you had to script and i'm sure vernon adams laid in bed many times and just imagine that first drive here in austin stadium this was perfect he managed the offense once the defense has to worry about if he's going to run the football or not all of a sudden you create seams and gaps and ben Wall just finds the end zone this is a team that just continues to reload at the skill positions. Now this is something the Ducks will do a great deal of. Jeff Lockie, the quarterback, they're going to go for two points, and they won't get it as Eastern Washington swarms and stops the Oregon Ducks. 6-0 Oregon just underway here at Hudson Stadium. Matt Wogan, the junior from Indian Trail, North Carolina, getting ready to get into the ball here. Shaq Hill, Symbol Webster are back for Eastern Washington. Touch, touchback. Look at Jordan West. Stands 6-4 and did have some opportunities last year. Had the nine touchdowns and one interception. Yeah, went 3-1 last year. Filled in when Vernon Adams was injured. and Had a chance to go to Cheney and watch him practice about a week and a half ago. And This is a big guy. I mean, all 6-4, 220. He looks the part as a Pac-12 quarterback. And he's excited, really, for this opportunity. And these receivers, they're Pac-12 Pac caliber wideouts. So he's going to be able to deal today. The question will be, can he get the ball off in time? And can his wideouts beat this young secondary of Oregon? Jabari Wilson is the primary back in the backfield. Keep an eye on Cooper Cup, number 10, the junior, who has 167 receptions already in his young career, sixth best in school history. On first down, they go to the middle and up. They come with a couple of yards on the play. Now this offense is a variety of tempos. Sometimes they'll huddle, sometimes they won't. Really intricate offense. A lot is going to be on Jordan West. He's going to have to understand all the different defensive alignments that Don Pell, the defensive coordinator, will throw at him. West turns and rifles a pass over the middle, complete, and very close to a first down. Shaq Hill with the reception on the play. Pick up of eight, and that will move the chains and a first down for Eastern Washington. This offensive line for Eastern Washington, they think it's a strength. 82 starts combined with all the guys up front. Kendrick Bourne, one of three, flanked to the right of West. He'll hand off on first down. There's so much about this game as we talked about Vernon Adams, and, and obviously it's deservingly so. But keep in mind, Eastern Washington, all these kids are from this region for the most part. They all wanted to play here at Oregon, and they got their opportunity to prove that they should have been offered. West a walk on when he arrived at Eastern Washington. Before the inside screen, Simba Webster makes the reception. But Chris Cisse comes up to make the stop. Talk to the Oregon staff, and they are absolutely in love with Chris Cisse. Big time potential. Played a year ago as a freshman. Started in the Rose Bowl and the National Championship game. Three starters of a year ago from the back four have departed. But they do have some youth that uh, got some experience last year because of injuries and so forth. Back to pass is West. Dirty pocket has to run. Nearly had his 
his head taken off near the 40 yard line down by Johnny Reagan. The speed of Oregon is just different. It's different than Eastern Washington. It's different than the majority of the teams in the Pac-12 conference. Things break down. A lot of quarterbacks here, they're getting the first. But the backers, the safeties, everybody can fly to the football. Johnny Reagan leading the charge, playing that nickel position. Jordan Descalo, the sophomore from Taft High School in Los Angeles to punt. Raylan Addison is back. So we will flutter down to the Oregon 28-yard line, and that's where they will go back to work, leading 6-0. Well, it's going to really be up front. Matt Hegarty. He's another transfer. We don't get a lot. Doesn't get as much love as Vernon Adams, but transfer from Notre Dame. His story is incredible. Came to camp here in high school. He's out of New Mexico. Was really excited. Kind of came down to Notre Dame and Oregon. Didn't work out. Went to the Fighting Irish and then had the ability to transfer. They were going to play him in a variety of different positions on the offensive line. He thought this was best for his future, and he made the transition. He showed up day one of camp and just fit in with that offensive line group, and that's not an easy group to fit in with. He and Vernon Adams had a whole lot to learn to the near side that for a first down Byron Marshall made himself available the senior from San Jose California has rushed for over a thousand yards and has caught over a thousand yards as well in his storied career here at Oregon on first down Vernon Adams drops back throws tight spiral and extending out but incomplete and welcome into Hudson Stadium here in Eugene Oregon Oregon on top six down we welcome the crowd that was watching California and Grambling going from eight yards out. Flanker screen to Dwayne Stanford, and he's rolled out of bounds at the near boundary. Inside Eastern Washington territory, that's a first down. They think this receiving core is as deep as they've ever been, whether it was Chip Kelly or Mark Helfer just the head coach, and Dwayne Stanford's a big reason why. Started 13 games a year ago, was absolutely dominant in training camp. This is a big guy, 6'5", 205. His nickname's Too Tall. <laughs> and he, every day he battled Tyree Robinson. He really has grown regarding all the intricacies of the receiver position. Expect him to have a big year. First down for Oregon. Don't blink. Here they come. Royce Freeman surveys, works to the far side, chops his steps and gets across for another first down. Keep an eye on Big 64, Tyler Johnstone. He's coming back. He hasn't played in a little while. What a big injury. It's good to get him at that left tackle position. One of their most gifted offensive linemen. Cameron Hunt and Matt Pearson, the guards. And Terrell Crosby playing the right tackle. He got some experience last year because of injuries up front. Again, they go to the Royce Freeman breaks a couple of times. Vernon Adams will turn, and the handoff. Tonight, Ben Wall will get it. When he came out of high school, out of Pasadena, a chance to talk to his high school coach earlier today, Dean Harrington. Adams fakes the handoff to Keith. He's cut back, spins, and he's hauled down shy of the five-yard line. Alec catch marching, caught up to him. Adams rolls throws into the end zone. Touchdown, Braylon Adams. With a reception from Vernon Adams. Congratulations to Vernon Adams for his first career touchdown pass at Oregon, but really Braylon Edwards, or Braylon Addison, what an incredible story. This young man missed last year after a knee injury, came back, was so excited to get going, got the start today. And movement up front. All start. Offense, number 57, five yard penalty, try for point. Well, they tie they, another another game with a touchdown pass here. Ties the NCAA record. Vernon Adams, safe to say. Well, it'll be fun to see next week. They go to Michigan State, see if they could break that record. The way the offense is looking thus far, I'd say that's a strong likelihood. You would go that direction. Touchback. Eastern Washington bringing it out to the 25 yard line. Eastern Washington comes out on first down. They empty out the backfield. In the gun is Jordan West, the junior. Backs and throws to the near wing, and Cooper Cup with the reception. Cup already sixth all-time in the school record books and receptions, and he has a first down. He's gone off every time they've played a big-time opponent over the last two years, whether it was Oregon State two years ago or UW a year ago. Last year, eight grabs for 145 yards and three touchdowns, so he loves these stages. He 
Eagles go to the ground. West flings it out to the far boundary. Missed tackle. And a gain. Trying to work the sideline a little bit. Might be the hair short here. Third and one. And Dario, the intended receiver. But closing on him fast was Chris Cisse. Fourth and one. Wilson, the man in motion, now flanked. They empty it out. West going for a quick little in route. And the pass complete to Shaq Play one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside and critical downs and distances. It's actually an advantage for Eastern Washington. Cooper Cup, Shaq Hill, Kendrick Bourne, those three receivers, they can win those matchups. Eastern the first down. Movement. Chris Cisse may have been across the line of scrimmage early. Offside. Defense number 12. A five-yard penalty. Replay first down. He's had success everywhere he has gone. They have a good game plan. Can they execute against a more athletic Oregon defense? First and five. Pump fake West. Little double move. Throws to the far sideline. And that ball is caught. Well, it's man-to-man -man coverage against sophomore Aaron Springs. It's a slant and go. And Bourne, he's dynamic when the ball's in the air. He did it all last year when you watch him on film. Did it early on in this ball game. Well, just up the road to Portland, Oregon. Back to throw is West. Looking to the post. Touchdown, Eastern Washington University. Shaq Hill hauls it in on a beautiful touch pass from Jordan West. <laughs> Tyler McNanny on to add the extra point. And the kick is up and good. And Eastern Washington on the board, trailing Oregon. 13 -7. Well, after the Ducks score unanswered, Eastern Washington comes right back with a touchdown of their own as Jordan West links up with Shaq Hill. Short kick flutters to one of the up men, and he secures it. Well, Shaq Hill, he's a veteran receiver. He's going to do a nice job of utilizing his hands before the officials are going to look at him. You'll see it. We'll freeze it. Look at his hands right there. He kind of gives a little push off, a little nudge against Cissé. The ref isn't looking there. The ref, you see his eyes? Refs are trained to see the ball, and then you go at the end where the receiver's about to catch it. That's a veteran move. You utilize your hands a little early. You get that quick little early push off. You use your wing, your elbow. Pushes a tad bit. That allows him to free up and, touch, and catch a touchdown. Vernon Adams out of Pasadena, California on first down. We'll give it over to Royce Freeman. Tries to cut back. That caught him in the clutter. The Ducks go seven plays, 63 yards in a touchdown. Ben Ross scores on the ground. Overruns their area. All of a sudden, you can run a truck through that hole. And that's exactly what happened for Freeman. Freeman, six carries, 51 yards already. Vernon Adams checks right. Throws left up the seam, has a man, and just down to the two-yard line comes the long, rangy tight end, Dwayne Stanford, the wideout from Cincinnati, Ohio. Watch for it, Adams, one to two, all the way across the field to number three. That's somebody who's got a little mastery of this system. Freeman into the end zone, touchdown Oregon. Look, we don't want to start comparing Vernon Adams to Marcus Mariota, but on that drive, on that sequence of plays, that's exactly what we've seen Marcus Mariota do in this stadium for years. Abe Schneider to add the extra point now for the Ducks. And it's 20-7 to seven, Oregon. I'll tell you what, Vernon Adams, you couldn't have written a better script to start this thing off. He stayed in the pocket, he's trusted his reads, He's gotten to his backside of the backfield. He's gotten to the third guy in his progression. He's utilized his God-given ability, which is the ability to run, but also keep his eyes downfield. And Eastern Washington fans watching, they've seen that for years. And this young man, he's coming into his own. He understands the sense of urgency. This being his last year, he won the job. He's won over his teammates, but nothing can solidify you as the guy outside of playing well. And he's done that thus far in this game. I just wonder how much of the offense Scott Frost has installed. What percentage of that offense has he actually been able to translate to Vernon Adams? Here's the kickoff. Deep into the end zone. A bit of hesitation. Simba Webster will bring it out. He is spun around. We talked to Scott Frost about that. Of how much did you really give Vernon Adams? And he showed up day five of practice. That means they're in their fifth day of install. They can't slow down everything just to make sure number three can get caught up. So he had to really cram on his own, cram with Scott Frost late at night, early in the mornings, and he did so. 
And then when you get into game week, you get to pair back a lot. You just put in the 60 or so plays of your scheme. And remember with this Oregon offense, it's about 20 concepts. They just dress them up a lot differently with different formations, personnel, and things of that nature. So I think when you give him at the limited playbook, he can fly. And I think his playbook is only going to grow as the season goes on. West on first down, trying to get a little room Good out there. Personnel, and so does Oregon. They want to rotate 25 players with their starting unit on defense. Second and five. West screen pass near side. Joe Walker, he is a big guy. 6'2", 240, returning starter. Probably their most consistent defensive player. West takes the handoff, lets it develop. West takes the handoff, rolls out right. Connor Cup with a reception. Brings up second and seven. Nowhere to go that time as Jabari Wilson is swarmed under. Oregon will break four. West got hit. West on low. Look at what Oregon does up front. They do a nice job. It's called a twist. The defensive tackle goes outside. Christian French, he loops back inside. It happens on the opposite side as well. And when you're moving so many different players, it becomes really hard as Tyson Coleman got himself into the backfield. Madison will fair catch, and Oregon will go to work at their own 23-yard line. Madison, the man in motion. Nice tackle there, but fighting through the first contact and then plowing ahead. There's a real competition for this backup running back spot. They're going to figure it out early on in the season. They've got Benoit, Tony Brooks-James. Remember a year ago when they played in the national championship game, they were banged up. Carrington didn't play. They lost a lot of guys, obviously, up front as the season went on. Kevin Allen was injured early on in that ball game. So this is as healthy as they've been at the skill positions. Here is Kanan Benoit breaking it up to the far sideline and driven out of bounds. Big game for Benoit. Look at that hole. How about that? Then he'll just follow the block of Byron Marshall. Nice job. First and ten, Adams is back on tiptoe, slings one down the seam, and that one sails over the head of the intended receiver, Braylon Adams. Boy, just an embarrassment of riches as Tony Brooks James comes into the lineup, the freshman from Gainesville, Florida. And movement up front by the Oregon Ducks. The snap, false start. Offense number 72, five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, Brooks James was a big-time recruit, and they said he has big play potential. He did it all training camp, and he's earned the playing time now. And you know, Sitting on the sideline watching Benoit make some plays, and I say, hey, it's my turn. Brooks James stays in the backfield. He'll take it. He tries to cut it up off the left tackle. He gets across the 20-yard uh, line. It's spun around by Todd Raines. That'll end the first quarter of play with the Oregon Ducks. And they probably want to go faster. <laughs> you know? Great efficiency thus far in Burton Adams. Great command. Really like how Scott Frost has called this game. Vernon Adams will fake and will keep. And we are back in Eugene with the Ducks up 20 to nothing over Eastern Washington. And Bo Baldwin saying that he really wouldn't know what the speed is like until he experienced it. It's not just the speed, but it's how efficient the Ducks are with that speed. Well, the first three possessions in the first quarter, two minutes and 17 seconds, 242 and 58 seconds, resulting in three touchdowns. I've been watching these Eastern Washington defensive secondary coaches work with their guys, trying to help them slow down the Ducks, talking a lot about form tackling and wrapping everybody up. But it's a tough deal down here. And I can tell you, too, there's been a lot of uh, work with the trainers working on guys like Mitch Fedick, who had his chin busted up. So these defensive secondary guys are really trying to hold down the Ducks, but it's a tough deal today. And a moment ago, Zach Bruce walked under his own power off the field. They give now to Tony Brooks James, who a moment ago came out of the backfield. And then they got a little town in the backfield. Whoa. They got some speed <laughs> around sure the edge. I'll tell you what. Oregon is not lacking athleticism. They continue to recruit and reload. And these aren't huge recruits in terms of 
dominating other big time schools. They're just getting guys that fit their system. What a great job of evaluating the high school talent in both of these young running backs we've seen thus far this evening. Aiden Schneider will end the extra point, and the Ducks lead it 27 to 7. Yeah, the Oregon Ducks on the board again. The last five seasons, here is how they have ranked in the nation. They've led the Pac 12 in scoring since 07. Absolutely dominant in terms of just moving the ball down the field, being efficient. And they've also led the nation in takeaways. I mean, they've been dominant in so many phases of this game. This ball will drive Shaq Hill back to the end zone. That's a touchdown. We were talking during the break, Yogi, about the speed man front of the Oregon Ducks with Henry Mondo getting the start this afternoon. The sophomore from Portland, Oregon, Alex Balducci, the senior, and DeForest Buckner. Senior from Hawaii, all bearing down on Jordan West. He goes to work here on first down. He'll fake a handoff. Throws out far side. Connor Cup with it. Breaks a tackle. Has a first down. And more across the 40 to the 50. In the foot race. Here comes Cup. Down to the 20-yard line. Still on his feet. Still moving forward. Diving to the pylon. And apparently out of bounds at the two-yard line. And trying to will your team back into this game. Watch Cooper Cup. He's been dominant in his two years, picking up blocks from the receivers. Then he just says, you know what, this is on me. And he's just fighting and fighting, tooth and nail, tooth and nail, using that weapon, that right arm. What a nice job going up against Aaron Sprint. Quickly to the line of scrimmage at the two-yard line of the Ducks. The turn and the handoff, and Wilson is stacked up at the three-yard line. Cooper Cup, 37 touchdowns the last two years. Has played huge in big games. At Oregon State two years ago, over 100, 100 yards, two touchdowns. Against Washington last year, 145 yards, receiving three touchdowns. He loves these environments. West will turn, and the handoff. Look for them to run left over Clay DeBoer, their left tackle. The handoff again comes to Jalen Moore. This time he is chopped down for maybe a loss of a yard on the play. Alex Balducci lines up right over the ball. West in the pistol, he's going to roll out, West is going to throw, touchdown Eastern Washington. Bourne's a savvy wide receiver, runs a little in and out route. One team that averaged 44 points a game last year, best in the nation. Well, they're best of friends, I mean this summer Cooper Cup got married, Vernon Adams was there for him and Anna's wedding. In the wedding party, I mean, these are best of friends. Talking to both of them, they said they talked this week. It wasn't any joking around, it was serious. It was wishing each one of them best of luck. And this is a little bit awkward, but this is a little awkward between these two, but really high competitors. They both raised each other's games when they were both on the roster of Eastern Washington. Uh, 104 grabs last year, most in FCS. Just had his 200th career reception, and that was his longest career reception. I'm surprised he was passed over. Talked to a lot of coaches in the Pac-12 this last week. So how come he didn't recruit him? His dad, his grandfather, played in the National Football League, has the bloodlines. But he was passed up, and he's making the most of it. This is Marshall. So I'm looking forward to watching the efficiency of Vernon Adams in Oregon. Yeah, they want to re-kick. And he's in a really unique situation here. Remember, in his career, he followed up Tommy Frazier. That's right. And that was not an easy thing to do after they won a national championship. So he said he didn't really talk a lot to Vernon Adams about replacing Marcus Mariota. They touched upon it here and there. I'm sure as the season goes on, they'll talk about it. But not only is he a brilliant play caller, definitely an up-and-coming potential head coach in either next year or the year after that. It's going to happen quickly for Scott Frost. But he's got a lot of depth to him about this position, about dealing with adversity as he went through it as a player as well. Marshall to run up on it. Has a block, has an opening. He's going to cut it back to the 40, tripped up. Byron Marshall doesn't get the love I think that he deserves. Such a talented player. Last year playing wide receiver over a thousand yards. The year before as a running back over a thousand yards. And we talk about a lot of their players in this conference. He's in the same mold as the DJ Fosters of the Adoree Jacksons. He's a dynamic playmaker, was a massive recruit here. He's lived up to the hype, and now he's the senior. He's the guy in the meeting rooms. He's really the leader of this offense. 
Royce Freeman's back in the backfield now for Oregon. Vernon Adams on first down. Steps up. Throws. Nearly intercepted. Been a, a pick. Well, the thing to remember, right, is this defense of Eastern Washington, they, they've gone up against Vernon Adams for years. So one of the keys for this game is for them trusting their instinct and just going because they have some elements that are built into themselves, into their DNA, because they've just gone against them so much. Should have had a pick right there. Samson and Bukum was under that ball, did not make the catch. So Oregon will go back to work on third down. Pass out to the far flank. Adams fakes the handoff, has a man deep, angling the pass. Complete. Down to the 10-yard line, Dwayne Stanford, big target at 6'5". Well, that's all on Stanford, too. He was thrown into double coverage. He just boxed out the two defenders and went up and got the ball like it was a rebound. Adams back to throw, settles in, throws a bullet. That one intended for Stanford. It's a post route. He just climbs right in front of the two defensive backs at Eastern Washington. Just puts his body in front of him, makes the grab, and that's hard. That's hard to defend. That's just pure athleticism and size. Cameron Marshall flanked to the right of Adams and to the near side. Comes Braylon Addison. And off comes to Freeman, tries to cut back and does. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 99. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal with an automatic first down. And so Oregon goes back to work, and here's Freeman just dancing into the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon. Eden Schneider on to add the extra point for the Ducks. Well, the Oregon Ducks last year had 78 scoring drives under three minutes. Uh, today, Yogi, uh, more of the same. Five for five in drives under three minutes, and they've been very consistent at it. Jack Hill grabs this one, scoots right up the middle. Has an opening. There's a flag on the play. The ball is ripped away from Hill. He's able to backtrack and cover it at the 40-yard line. Watch Matt Wogan, the kicker. Tries to change the ball. Shaq Hill, and never want to do that when you're around contact. But. They're in the return, holding. Receiving team number 37. A 10-yard penalty. First down, Eastern Washington. Jordan West at the controls, 12 of 14, 173 yards, two touchdowns. He's had a pretty good afternoon. He steps back, looks, and the play blown down. Ball start. Offense number 79. Five-yard penalty. First down. Now keep an eye on this hold. You'll see it. But the man that he's holding, Fotu Leato, this true freshman, what an interesting story. He was completely under-recruited out of the state of Washington. And all of a sudden, his highlight tape just kind of exploded, literally. He went from 20 looks to 20,000 looks to over 617,000 views on Huddle. Everyone around the country saw the way that he played, and it was with an intensity. But remind you of Troy Palomalo. He's got the hair coming out. The dominant player on special teams playing early in his career. Screen pass comes to the near side for Eastern Washington, but there is a flag on the play. Offside, defense number 44. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. First down at the 32. West is back. Fires a bullet over the middle. Connor Cup with it, threading his way across the 40 yard line. Cooper Cup with a reception. And now West goes back to work here to the near side. West throws it up for grabs. It's intercepted. Looked as though the defensive line for Oregon jumped off sides. You're taught as a quarterback, it's a free play, take a shot to your receiver. You'll see, yep, two guys. But to me, that's, that's a missed call, and as a quarterback, that's what you're supposed to do. You even yell it in practice when it happens. Free play, and you take a shot. Receiver kind of quit on the route, and he threw it up. Prior to that, he had a pretty good afternoon going 15-17, 232 and two touchdowns, but Oregon will take it on the turnover. And Adams comes the other way, the ball's poked free from behind by him, from him, and it is recovered by Eastern Washington. Now the ball's a little loose. And it, you know, in this Oregon program, that is the number one thing they talk about. For the last five years, the Oregon Ducks are plus 78. That's 40 more than anyone else 
in the Pac-12 Conference. They're plus 78 in turnovers. It's ridiculous. Last year, best team in the country in terms of turnover differential. That is not okay for Vernon Adams to have the ball loose as though. Sometimes it's going to get punched out. But you, high and tight is the number one priority if you're an Oregon Duck and you have the ball in your hands. So West will get it right back. Fires to a man out of the backfield. Chris Cisse, he's been in on a lot of action this afternoon. He comes up and delivers a blow on Jalen Moore. And then in the championship game, West back to throw, trying to set up the screen, but boy, that is blown up. Jalen Moore is knocked down by T.J. Daniel, the defensive end. They're going to rotate at least eight players up front. T.J. Daniel, one of them, out of Bishop O'Dowd High School in Oakland, California. Former tight end, redshirted a couple years ago, played in every game last year. And they could bring fresh bodies off the edge, and they have the depth to do it. Look out in situations like third down. Third and 13. West to the far side. And the pass is caught, but shy of the first down. That was Moore plowing ahead. Looks like he's got the needed yard for the first down. Look at the defensive end. I mean, he looks like he's over the ball right now. West hesitates, throws to the near pylon. Cup is after it. Look at their hands. See the black line? That's our line of scrimmage. Look at their hands. I'm Bo Baldwin. I'm immediately going to these officials. 7-0-1 to go in the second. Jordan West. Under throws. Third and 10. Eastern Washington 0 for 5 in third down situations. West is back to throw. Zips a pass to Connor Cup. He's across the 20. Still on his feet. Churning to the 15. And he's got a first down. He's dynamic. You know, some players, that, you know, the old adage is he, he's just a football player. He, he's got a football player. May not be straight ahead fast, but this guy can do a little bit of everything. I mean, he's a, been an All-American since he was a retro freshman. I and mean, he's got a knack with the ball in his hands. He spins away from it. Been around the game for a long time. Dad and grandfather both played in the National Football League. 627 to go, second quarter. Oregon on top by 20. West back to throw. The ball is batted down. We talked about the length of DeForest Buckner. How about 6'7 to 290? Well, he's he's just, to me, another great story of student athletes. I mean, he could have gone. He was projected to go higher than Eric Armstead. Went in the first round of the National Football League. And he decided to come back because he made a commitment to his family, and more importantly himself, he'd get his degree. We had a chance to talk to him yesterday. So excited to come back, not to just be a part of the program, but to be able to get that diploma. Second and 10 now. This is Cup with a reception. Pivot move across the 10 and got to the pylon. Touchdown. Receiver is all about being savvy. He understands how to utilize the speed and agility of Ugo Amadi, true freshman. How about seven catches, 159 yards today, Yogi, and a touchdown for Cup. Myron Marshall settles under it. Speeds across the 30, a burst of speed to the 40, and is spun down at the 41-yard line. Another good return by Byron Marshall, an excellent field position for Vernon Adams and company. Adams 11 of 15, 163 yards and a touchdown, and Jordan West, who was his understudy a year ago at Eastern Washington, 20 of 26, 271, three touchdowns and one interception. Well, when Vernon Adams Jr. got hurt last year, it allowed Jordan West to play in four games, get four starts. And that was critical for him, this not being his first game ever. Keep in mind, he's, he's a former walk-on. Everybody overlooked him as well. This entire team of Eastern Washington has a chip on their shoulder. They want to prove that what they've done there, a, it would have been good enough for Vernon Adams to stay, and also they would be voted to play at this level. Adams on first down will hand off the go-ground. And Royce Freeman again is called upon. Eastern Washington, a good road team, Yogi. They've scored at least 27 points in the last 11 road games. They know how to get it done. Here are flags flying now as Oregon quickly hustled back to the line. Start. Offense number 73. 
Five yard penalty, second down. Because Oregon goes so fast with their tempo, they really have to be efficient. If they have a dismal drive or two, all of a sudden that could be a lull because the offense isn't on the field for a long time. And all of a sudden, Eastern Washington gets a lot of time to allow that offense to cool off. Adams will keep. Avoids a couple of tacklers and then is spun down just across the line of scrimmage. Alec Ketchmarchik, the freshman from Woodenville, Washington, comes up to make the stop from his linebacker spot. So it'll be third and seven for the Oregon Ducks. Ducks are three for four today, converting on third down. Third and long now for Adams. He'll duck it and run. He spins just shy of the 50 yard line. Mitch Fenning buried him. Well, he took a shot. Yeah, and in this defense, they, they're excited to go up against Vernon Adams. Keep in mind, he went on his official visit, University of Oregon, when he was still a student athlete at Eastern Washington. Fourth down, they give to Freeman. He works the wing. He shakes and turns and gets to the far hash mark for a first down. He's got Marshall and Addison flanked here to the near side. Hard rush. He is spun around and knocked down. Comes off the edge, just gets an extra step on Tyrell Crosby, the right tackle. Abukum, he can play that stand-up mm -hmm. outside backer, end position athlete. They give it to Freeman, finds some room. Threading his way out to near the 30-yard line before Zach Bruce came up to make the stop. Just takes his time, knows where his holes are, can set up his blockers, and then he just turns it on, and you're not going to be able to arm tackle him. Again, they call on Freeman, and he pushes the pile across the 30-yard line. He's carried it now 13 times for 90 yards on the afternoon. He'll get a breather, and Kanai Benoit will step in now for the Oregon Ducks. He'll make that Tony Brooks James, who has a touchdown already today. He'll come out of the backfield. That ball's thrown in his vicinity and it looked like it grazed the hip was it tipped though by the man in coverage and that was a little bit of a miss on Vernon Adams you got to lead him Brooke James wide open up against the backer that was Kurt Calhoun in coverage this is where they really stress defenses make the run allow Vernon Adams to be able to run and throw here tonight Benoit the man in the backfield play action Adams pump fakes fires to the near side has a man wide and it was dropped. Well, it was a simple slant and go. Beat the corner easily. Just allowed the ball to get to his body. Those, you've got to go up and grab the football. You know the cornerback is trying to close in. They don't know where the ball is, only you do. Hernandez, no. They made one slip away there. On first down, Eastern Washington throwing. Kendrick Bourne out at the far sideline is spun around by Chris Cisse. This is tricky here if you're Bo Baldwin. You want to make sure that you utilize all the clock on this drive, but specifically this series. If you don't get a first down, you want to make sure you take as much time off as you possibly can. Cooper Cup, seven grabs on the day. They go to the ground and effectively. Holding. Offense number 11. Ten yard penalty. Second down. You see Kendrick Bourne just fighting hands inside and that's a tough one you got to let him go when the running back gets past you the right call but as a receiver you don't really know what's happening so when you feel the back go past you that's when you really have to let go because it wasn't a hold until the back was already passed second and five now for Jordan West Cooper Cup West back to throw and as he delivered the ball, he took a lick. Well, Eastern Washington uh, has been a very successful operation. Bo Baldwin in his eighth year there. They have won three straight Big Sky titles and, of course, won a national championship in the FCS in 2010. They really have a way about them. You, know, you go to practice and 
and they don't have the greatest facilities in the world, but they continue to grow and grow and grow. They built that new stadium, the Inferno. People get rocking there. And they have a unique brand of football. And Bo Baldwin, you talk to coaches around the country, he's as respected as anybody. Two-time Big Sky Coach of the Year. I, I, I believe that Eastern Washington is really lucky that they still have him. Yeah. You know, he's going to get his opportunity at a bigger school. Not sure if he necessarily will take it. He loves it there. He loves what they built there. Really proud of it. He's one of the brightest offensive minds in the entire country. Eastern will kick. Addison is back. Fair catch called for, and he'll settle in at his own 21 yard. And this is a great situation here for him, not only as a communicator to Vernon Adams in a two minute drill, but also for Vernon Adams how to operate this type of situation. Adams will throw on first down, and he swings one over the middle. That one caught by the, the durable tight end of the Oregon Ducks. Johnny Munt, his first catch of the afternoon. They quickly go back to it. Royce Freeman out of the backfield to the far side for a first down. Two timeouts, a lot of time. Variety of tempos here at Oregon. Green light that's kind of super fast. Yellow light is medium. And red light when they check to the coaches on the sideline. Marshall and Addison wide to the near side. Adams back, checks left, moves right. He's rolling out and he pump fakes and he's driven out of bounds. Adams, pump fakes, now they'll run it. He has the first down and more across the 50. He's going to slide down to the 41-yard line and they'll call a timeout with 12 seconds to him play tonight and some of his weapons. Juju Smith, Schuster, an absolutely dominant wide receiver. I think he's an all-pack 12 caliber player. With a handoff here, bouncing out to the far side, Royce Freeman. Adams looks to a man flanking out to the far side. Oh, and him, former walk-on, kind of came out of nowhere. Beat out Matt Wogan. He's going to have to make some critical kicks as the season goes on. Yeah. Snap the hold, the kick is up, and the kick is good. Jordan West, he's played well. Cooper Cup, he's been superhuman at times, really. Vernon Adams, really efficient. you got to be impressed if you're an Oregon fan. Let's go down to Lewis Johnson standing by with Mark Kelfridge. All right, thanks very much. Were your thoughts on how Vernon Adams has played and led your squad this, so far this first half? <laughs> Sporadically. You know, he's done some really good things. Missed a couple wide open touchdowns, missed a couple uh, protection checks. But overall, you know, offensively, we're, we're playing okay. Defensively, way too sloppy. All right, so what do you do to clean up that defensive play? Tackle. Do your job and tackle. We've got some guys guessing and ducking their head and, you know, shoulder. All, all, all galaxy. Okay. All right, thanks, Mark. Thanks, Lewis. led by Jordan West. Your thoughts on their efficiency in the first half? I thought we did some really good things, especially game one. I mean, there's still some things you want to clean up, and, uh, you know, we know that, and there'll be plenty of things to coach. But overall, you know, considering the noise and using silent count and, you know, having to use a little bit more sometimes pass as an extension of the run game, I thought they've operated uh, fairly well. But, again, we're looking for uh, to make improvements into the second half. All right, now that you've seen the speed and efficiency of Oregon live in person, what's the challenge here in the second half to try and slow that and Vernon Adams down? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, that's the thing. You have to make things as difficult as you can. You know they're going to get their yards. You have to find ways to maybe find a red zone stop or a turnover because they're going to move it from 20 to 20, and you have to keep working. We went through a phase where we didn't tackle, you know, but that's also a credit to them. They got guys that are hard to tackle, but we got to make sure we're low and we're disciplined. I thought our tackling improved as we went towards the second, you know, the end of that first half. So hopefully we'll just continue that in the second half where we left off the first. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Kevin? Well, thank you, Lewis. Take a look at the numbers. A whole lot of yards there amassed by Oregon, 452. But the same thing for Eastern Washington can be said, 299. And on the ground, they were not effective with just the 22 yards. Oregon, 271. Third down conversions, 3 of 6 for Oregon. Fourth down conversions, 3 of 3 for Eastern Washington. Eastern Washington has not hurt themselves. 
Uh, West was intercepted, but remember they immediately got the ball back when Vernon Adams fumbled the football. And Eastern Washington will get the football now to start this third quarter play. And Jordan West has been outstanding, and they have not really gotten to the quarterback today. Well, no sacks. I mean, he hasn't flinched in this environment. Remember, a year ago, he filled in for Vernon Adams, started four games, went three and one, and he's got some weapons. And this is this is a group of receivers that is good as anybody Oregon's going to see for the most part throughout this season in terms of running discipline routes and catching the ball. They'll, they'll see better athletes at times, but what Cooper Cup has done and the wide receiver going up against these young DBs, what Shaq Hill has done, Kendrick Bourne, I mean, that is the advantage for Eastern Washington through one half of play. Cup, Hill, and Bourne each with a touchdown reception. And Cooper Cup has been dynamite with 160 yards on eight catches. On first down to start this third quarter of play, they summon Jabari Wilson. But you heard uh, Mark Helfrich in his conversation with Lewis Johnson. Uh, the defense unacceptable in his mind in the first half. Way too sloppy. Jabari Wilson again gets the call here on second down. Wilson, the man in motion out of the backfield. Hard rush. And West is brought down and sacked for the first time. Right to the left of your screen. Oregon does a nice job of making sure they send a lot of bodies at the offensive line. They understand who has to block who, who's responsible for who. Scala will lift this one high into the air. Under it is Braylon Addison breaking to the 50. There's a flag way back here at the 45-yard line of the Oregon Ducks. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 26. A 10-yard penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul. First down. Penalty goes to the Ducks. They'll have the football when we come of back. Oregon at the X's and O's. This offensive line doesn't get a lot of credit, and their athletes don't either. Because of the tempo they play out, they get defenses to over-pursue. And what does that do? Well, it allows for big plays by these really athletic running backs of Oregon. Royce Freeman, Tony Brooks James, then back to Freeman. Look at that offensive line and this zone running scheme. They have the ability just to put their bodies between the defender and the back, and their backs can do the rest. Royce Freeman will take it. Gets a block out on the edge. Avoids a tackler. Plows ahead near midfield. Well, running backs, they're taught to deliver it every once in a while. How about that? Royce Freeman doesn't even slow down. Well, I do try to stop him. Here is Freeman spinning across the 50-yard line, and he is upended. You, you can tell with Oregon. You saw a picture of Mark Helfers. They're getting the tempo going. That's when they're at their best. They've got three tempos. Green tempo when they go as fast as possible. Yellow tempo when it's a little bit more controlled. And then red when they look to the sideline for the play. But when they're in green tempo, that's when they're at their best. Second and five, Adams. The handoff. Freeman breaks three and is slipped up. Micaiah down on the field for Eastern Washington. Well, Freeman checks out. Could I been wise in? Offset to the left to Vernon Adams, who goes to work on first down. Fakes the handoff, settles in. Scans, adjusts, throws on the run to his left, and a complete pass down inside the 10 yard line. I can remember Pete Carroll telling me sometimes at the quarterback position you want the guy that you'd pick first in the backyard if you're playing backyard football. Well, that's a backyard football play. Vernon Adams, he's made so many of those in his career. Things break down. The game was stopped for an injury timeout. JT Tioli, the uh, man shaken up for Eastern Washington. He'll come over to the sideline. And the Ducks, after stopping Eastern Washington, three and out. Now take charge, first and goal. And they swing it here to the near side to Ben Wall, who hesitates. Tries to bounce to the boundary, and then he is driven back. The defense of Jeff Schmetting, new defensive coordinator. Remember, their big change last year at Eastern Washington, making him the defensive coordinator, going to more of a 4-2-5 scheme. You get athletes who can run to the football. Great example right there by Eastern Washington. Reigns and Calhoun, the first to it. Adams lingering with that handoff. Freeman trips up and is stopped at about the two yard line. Here's Adams. The handoff comes to Freeman and he's in the end zone. Royce Freeman, 230 pounds. When they're running tempo in the field, it's hard. But it's even harder when they're going fast inside the five because you just can't really get a lot. The extra point is the Ducks lead at 43 21 with 10 29 to go in the third. Snap the hold, the kick is up, and the Ducks lead at 43.
Vernon Adams stirring it up here at Autzen Stadium with the Ducks in command. Let's take a look at the Heisman Watch presented by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Well, when you look at the Pac-12, I think Adoree Jackson, Cody Kessler, they're going to have big years. Adoree Jackson, a gifted athlete. Royce Freeman, Oregon's going to have success. He's a dominant player. And I can remember all three of those young men in high school at the Elite 11 or at the opening. Really sound mentally, really gifted athletes, not just on the field, but also off it. Those young men have a chance to get to New York City. Matt Wogan to kick off. Eastern Washington will take the touchback. Royce Freeman, three touchdowns on the ground here tonight. He's dominant. I mean, he's an All-American candidate for sure at the running back position. Last year, freshman All-American. Was really dominant when you think about what he did all season long and the durability of playing running back in this system. This year, they're going to lean on him more. Tonight has been a great example. And he's really grown. You know, we had a chance to talk to him media day. He's become more vocal. The coaching staff has asked him to be more of that. But he's a dominant threat. I mean, he really is. He's kind of like that Greek statue. When you touch him on the shoulders or on the arm, <laughs> he is an absolute rock. And he's learned from one of the best in Gary Campbell. Not only one of the top running back coaches in the country, but his players. They also say he's the best dressed guy on the staff. Oh, he had a white fedora on the way into the ball game this afternoon. Very clean. Flags fly on the play. Movement. False start. Offense number 79. Five-yard penalty, still first down. They go to work here on first and 15. West drops back to pass. Throws long, intending it for Cooper Cup. Brings up second and 15 now. West will roll out. Plants his foot and throws long down the field, and that is underthrown, and excellent coverage down there. Oregon's just getting pressure with their guys up front. And it looks like he just cramped up. and He is hobbling back there. On third down and 15. West slings with him to the far side. An outstanding pass. Kendrick Bourne hauls it in for an Eastern Washington University first down. Outstanding ball thrown out there by West. Well, the quarterback position in Eastern Washington has always been extremely gritty. I mean, even last year, Vernon Adams breaks his foot against Idaho State. First down for the Eagles. And they go to the ground. Sam McPherson. I'm Eastern Washington. I'm working the top of the field right now. The top of your screen. Got Cooper Cup, Kendrick Bourne. They're on the short side of the field. West is back to throw. He looks in that direction. The ball is tipped. Third and seven. West back to throw. They're trying to find McPherson coming out of the backfield. That ball's thrown too far out in front. Duck showing four across the front. They bring five. West backs up. Ball tip went off the fingertips of the intended receiver, Bourne, but a flag flies on the play. There are fouls by both teams, and they will offset. Pass interference. Offense number 10. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 45. Offsetting fouls. Replay. Fourth down. Those are tough. Those are tough calls. You got to know better because you're going to call it every time. And Cooper Cup was flagged for Eastern Washington. So they offset, and we do it again. Fourth and seven. West steps up, flags fly again. And he is tripped up shy of the first down. Personal foul, hands to the face. Defense number 96. A 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run with an automatic. First down. Christian French penalized. So a first down for Eastern Washington, and they were able to move it now with 8.58 remaining in the third. Six Christian penalties French. on Oregon. And he's right here at the bottom of your screen. Guys compete and fight, but those are just simple things you can't do. Riley Hennessy is in, the freshman from Camas, Washington. They'll go to the ground, and Sam McPherson is summoned here to the near sideline. He is spilled. Hennessy, 6'3", 200-pound freshman, Yogi, and he was a good one in the state of Washington. Gatorade Player of the Year in 13. Yeah. Threw 64 Side touchdowns. Sideline warning. Oregon. Hennessy's a thrower. He's a pure passer. Hennessy settles in. Quick trigger here to the near side, and another flag. Holding. Defense number 12. 10-yard penalty. 
An automatic first down. Chris Cisse, the guilty party. Terrence Grady was the intended Seventh receiver. penalty on Oregon, Yogi. At Eastern now in a first down situation again. Hennessy backs up and throws. And the pass complete to get underneath the corner. Keep throwing those slant routes. And that corner is Hugo Amati, a freshman, seeing his first action. Hennessy back to throw, flushed out of the pocket. Flags fly again on the back side. This may be against Eastern. T.J. Daniel in pursuit. Now flag flies down there. So we have two penalties. There are fouls by both teams. Holding. Offense number 79. After the play, personal foul. Late hit. Defense number 86. Both penalties are being forced. An automatic first down. See the hold on the right of your screen. Cassidy Curtis. And then, I mean, that's just, yeah. you can't do that. I mean, you got to be better than that. You have to feel great if you're the Eagles right now. I'd take a shot if I were them. Man coverage. Hennessy with a handoff and nearly slipping away. They are spreading the wealth back there in the backfield for Eastern. Trying to cobble it together. Doing a pretty good job right now. Hennessy is again flushed, but he's got all kinds of room. He works just shy of the 12 yards. So he climbed the pocket every time there's been pressure. First down, Jabari Wilson will get the call. He scoots left side, one-on-one. -on -one. He goes right to the one-yard line. Chris Cisse was able to stop him right at the threshold. Joe Walker there as well. And he barely got him. And this is exactly what Mark Helfrich talked with Lewis Johnson about at halftime. We got a tackle. Chris Cisse overruns it, over-pursues. Riley Hennessy, the quarterback. He wants to check at the line. Barry Wilson is the lone setback. They look for Cup. They throw a low ball. Hennessy throws a dime in the end zone and a touchdown. <laughs> Hennessy, first he changes the play at the line of scrimmage like he's Peyton Manning. And then just drops a dime <laughs> on the slant round to Cooper Cup like he's been there before. Eastern to add the extra point. And they are in business. 44 28, 535 to go in the third quarter. Redshirt freshman. Hooks up with Cooper Cup, and then an offside kick, and the ball batted around, and a flag flies. The result of the play is recovered by the kicking team. However, offside, kicking team number 30. Five-yard penalty, free kick. Uh, yeah, you can see it. Right to the left of the kicker. Curtis Bellin. You'll see it right next to the kicker. Right there. It's actually Cole Karstetter. See him? Right over the line. Just a tad early. Mm. Great idea. Great hustle. Great call. Bo Ball, he's always kind of been a gambler. He's taking a run at it. <laughs> Why not? Well, Why not is right. I mean, they've got the energy right now in this stadium. Marshall going for it, but it was taken by the up man, Addison. And Adams Jr. was the story at the beginning of this ball game, coming back to play against his ex-teammates, Eastern Washington University, and this is final year of collegiate eligibility. We'll hand off to Royce Freeman, who already has three touchdowns on the ground. He breaks it here to the 50. He's out near to the 40-yard line, and he's finally run out of bounds. Mitch Fetting, who weighs all at 175, trying to get in front of the locomotive. Made Royce Freeman tackle him in the backfield. He broke from that, and now all of a sudden the momentum has shifted. Addison in motion, low snap, gathered in by Vernon Adams Jr., flushed out of the pocket, throws on the run complete by Vernon Adams. Rashad Wadu makes the stop on the play. Brings up second and one. They're going to go for the bundle. And the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon. Byron Marshall holds it in. It's a back shoulder throw, and they teach you to throw right to the back of the helmet. Beautifully placed by Vernon Adams Jr., Byron Marshall. Their most consistent, probably their most talented receiver, top to bottom. Made the shift from running back two years ago. Thousand yard rusher, thousand yard receiver. And that's usually a throw, a pass and a catch. And they're gonna check probably. And it's under review. Yeah, they're gonna review it just to see where he was down. But what's most impressive about that is that that relationship of the back shoulder throw is something that takes months to develop. And Vernon Adams has not been here for a month. And what do you see there, Yogi? It looks like the backside is right on the goal line, and the ball there at his belt buckle. 
But yeah, it's got to be conclusive evidence to overturn it. It's all about the ball. It's not about the body. I think it's going to be too too close to overturn. Yeah. Calling the field is touchdown. And the officials in the review booth will have four different looks at it. After review, the rim on the field stands. Touchdown. Aiden Schneider to add the extra point. And the Ducks have put 51 on the board. They have won 10 consecutive home openers and have averaged 55 points in doing so. They're nearly there now here in the third. Look at that beautiful setting here in Eugene. Pac-12 after dark, and it almost started a trend on Twitter, right? Keep an eye on Monarchy Sarte, okay? He's playing that defensive end position. He's got a chance to tackle Royce Freeman, misses the tackle, and all of a sudden, big-time game for Oregon. Momentum completely shifts. They score a touchdown. It's a different type of ball game. But the momentum in this stadium, Kevin, was completely different before that run. They had a chance to make a play, and when the staff... If Eastern Washington goes back and watches this game, they're going to look at that play and say, oh, that was an opportunity for us. And then, of course, Vernon Adams goes right for the quick strike and finds Byron Marshall in the end zone for the touchdown. Yeah, you see he's got uh, the helmet off, and he just got some uh, news that he didn't want to hear. Jordan West told that he's not going to be going back in the game. I mean, he was absolutely locked up earlier. They were rolling out both the calves, the quads, hamstrings, everything, walking a lot better. It looks like the coaches have decided that he is done for the night. And he was good tonight, Yogi. 23 of 34, 293. And he and Cooper Cup had a connection going in the first half. Mark Helfrich told Lewis Johnson at half, we're making Cup look like he's all galaxy. Back to throw, Riley Hennessy throws this one on time. Hennessy showed complete command of the system. Yep. Check to the line of scrimmage. See the officials coming in because of a substitution. They're really all over that this year. And one team substitutes, making sure the other one has the opportunity to do so. Hennessy pressured, spins away from pressure, throwing on the run to the near side, and the Eagles have a first down. You don't even realize here in Austin Stadium and it's sold out again. You're just playing, you're just balling. <laughs> you watch his high school film coming out of Thomas High School. And this young man, he's, he's been he's been playing this way his whole life. Richard French thought he had him locked up. He didn't. Now he throws another beauty on the run. Angling here to the center of the field. Cooper Cup coming near side, trying to cut back. Puts his head down for a few more. I mean, you wonder how many teams in the Pac-12 Conference, how'd they miss on this young man? Dad, grandfather played in the NFL. He's got natural football skills. And he wants to rock in critical moments. And not about him playing well, but also their quarterback, Riley Hennessy. You kidding me? On the run, two times in a row, first downs. Cup, 10 catches, 198 yards, two touchdowns. Now they go to the tight end. Hennessy again throws it right on the money in stride. Well, he checks the plays and now aligns him at the goal line. The lone man in the backfield is the 200-pound junior from Carson, California, Jabari Wilson. The pass, too tall, off the fingertips of the intended receiver, Kendrick Bourne. Second and goal. Tennessee in the gun, drops back and throws to the far post. And a little fade route intended for Kendrick Bourne, too far out in front of him. Chris Cissé is in coverage. He has a few things to say to Mr. Bourne. Yeah, I'd go to Bourne down here in the red zone again, especially if you're going to go on the fade route. Athletic size, and it's third down. You know this is four down territory, though. They're going for it on third and four. Here are the Eagles now. The handoff coming to the little man, Jabari Wilson, spinning like a tap into the end zone. Touchdown, Eagles. Oh, they did it last year against UW when they played against the Pac-12 caliber opponent. Year before, they jumped all over Oregon State. Snap the hole, the kick is up, and the Eagles. Well, a 7 6 8 winning percentage since 2010. 53 and 16 since then. North Dakota State at the top of the heap, and then Harvard at 43 and 7. The FCS since 2010. Here's an onside kick. It is gathered in by the hands team, the upbacks. That time, Oregon, I think, was wise to it. They were, they were ready for something. Because upsets do happen. We've seen them in college football. Don't turn the channel, Ken. No, absolutely not. Eastern Washington beat 
Number 25, Oregon State, 49-46. Back at 13, as you mentioned, with Vernon Adams scoring four touchdowns through the air and then running for two himself. Vernon Adams is in a quarterback and hands to Royce Freeman. He bounces out to the far side, missed tackle, gets across for the first down. First down, just under two minutes remaining in the third. See him slowing the tempo up. Make it second and two. Adams will run. He's got the first down. He is across the 30 yard line. Run here. Quarterback draw, drops. Remember, this offensive line, pretty impressive. Matt Hegarty, I haven't talked enough about him at the center position. Transfer, graduate transfer from Notre Dame. Adams has now run the ball 12 times for 89 yards. Tony Brooks James is in the backfield. He is called upon to carry it, and he will. They'll take three tacklers with him across the 20-yard line and very close to a first down. You think of Oregon, you think of the swoosh, you think of the multiple uniforms, but they're a downhill running team, and they've got to be good up front. Matt Pearson, the left guard, Cameron Hunt, right guard, done a nice job inside. Screen pass, left side, Addison with it. He's across the 10, and they got chopped down. You know, all of a sudden, there they go. Second down. And a beautiful tackle applied there. As Tony Brooks James tried to accelerate, Cole Karstetter, though, met him at the ankles and chopped him down. Cole Karstetter, remember his brother, Jared Karstetter, played at Washington State, another brother playing at Idaho State. Adam drops the ball, but it looks like the back, and it looks like that Mark Elfridge will elect to kick here. Yeah, and you got to make that catch if you burn down. This is what you do at the quarterback position. He knows it. You're going to get a bad snap or not a perfect snap. That, that was by no stretch a bad one, but and rotate your hands underneath the football on a low snap, just like a receiver should on a low throw. The snap, the hole, the kick is up, it is good. Yogi Roth, Kevin Calabro, Lewis Johnson on the scene here at Hudson Stadium. Number seven, Oregon, outscoring Eastern Washington 17-14 in the third. And a 54-35 score, Oregon leading. We head to the fourth quarter of play. Eastern Washington without their starting quarterback, Jordan West. Out with cramps in the lower right leg. And his understudy, Riley Hennessy, has come on to lead Eastern to a couple of touchdowns in the third quarter. Eastern will get the ball back on the return. They'll start things at about the 19-yard line. Let's take a look now at the Red Vines' sweet moment. Well, it's sweet moments of the game because it's Cooper Cup, baby. He not only got married in the offseason, but he also worked on his game. He's been making plays all evening long. Ten grabs, 198 yards, two touchdowns, and he's been an absolute beast. I mean, really just dominant against these young corners of Oregon in every phase, whether it's been press coverage, he's been patient on the line of scrimmage, big plays down the field. With two quarterbacks, he has literally willed this team into this ball game. Man from Yakima with 198 yards, as Yogi mentioned, he had 197 career catches coming into tonight's game. That is sixth all-time at Eastern Washington. And he is just a junior playing in his first game of the year. Riley Hennessy, redshirt freshman, going to work. Settles into the pocket, he is poised, and he spots his man, Cooper Cup, coming open across the middle for the first. Just to try to make... Hennessy beat him with his arm. See a lot of Oregon jerseys. Hennessy unloads to the man coming out of the backfield. That is complete. And check out the previous play. Only three defenders are going to rush for Oregon. They're going to drop eight into coverage. Make it hard on Hennessy. That's what you do on a young quarterback. Try to make the window small. He continues to go through his progression. I'm telling you, big time credit to Bo Baldwin, his coach. Really teaching him the nuances of this position to step in and play like he has. Malcolm Williams Jr. made the catch a moment ago. Turns up field, leans ahead. He's very close to a first down. Pull out the hashtag, baby. Pac-12 <laughs> after dark. Let's roll. Somebody got a little itchy with the fireworks, I guess. This thing is not over. Hennessy steps up in the pocket and throws a bullet, rifling at about a foot and a half off the turf. Well, they're trying to double team. It's called bracket coverage. That means you put one defender on the inside, one on the outside of Cooper Cup. Not the easiest thing to beat, but a really nice job by Cooper Cup running his route. Yogi, 12 receptions for Cup. That ties his career high. They give it to Williams, the rookie. And Eastern Washington, they've really done a nice job to rotate guys into that backfield. 
including this man, Riley Hennessy, the quarterback. Steps back and throws over the top. <laughs> Complete the cut, but he dropped the ball. He runs a little nod route, meaning you attack the inside shoulder or the backer, then try to get over the top. You don't see him drop too many passes. Jawan Williams playing him there. The redshirt sophomore got, got lucky there for Oregon. Second and ten. Hennessy avoids the rush. Spots a man angling from the near side. Elfrish uh, insisting that Eastern had 12 men on the field. Bo Baldwin immediately calls a timeout. Offside. Defense number 79. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Correction. False start. Offense number 79. Five-yard penalty. Third down. There was miscommunication there for a moment. They have corrected the call and will go against Eastern Washington. So it brings up third and six for the Eagles. Hennessy was wrapped up but throw Ducks have been unable to get to the quarterback and inflict any kind of pain here is Hennessy floating one out to the far side that one is intended for Kendrick Bourne Bourne turned into a defender that time because it looked like Arian Springs actually had a better angle to the ball and Bourne broke it up and Aaron Springs he can run that's his skill set you want to go deep on him oh, oh. that's where he's good Crowd wanted an offensive P.I. Well, I think I think Warren just did a nice job, Yogi, to get his hand right in the chest of Springs and throw him off, and the ball was delivered there. Good play. And they've been battling all night long. Mm -hmm. This secondary against the receivers. Second and ten, Hennessy back to throw. Tosses that one right into coverage, and it is intercepted. Jawan Williams, the sophomore from Tucker, Georgia, comes up with the pick. And Hennessy tried to force that one into a crowd, Yogi. 100%. His eyes were on Terry Jackson the entire time. That's a redshirt freshman. That's a big play for that defense. Oregon gaining the moment. He was like Houdini. <laughs> he had a, uh, I feel like if he was at a Division one school when he did that, he would have been up for the Heisman. One heck of a player. That guy is a very good quarterback and makes a lot of plays. I mean, he was a great talent. Uh, you know, he was doing some, he did some good things at Eastern. You know, and I, to be honest, I'm excited to see what he does at Oregon. I was hoping that was the last I had seen of him, but I guess not. He said he actually got a Facebook message from Shaq Thompson <laughs> after they played. And it was a couple of weeks ago, actually, before he, he passed on math. I said, you can play in this level in the Pac-12, and he, he clearly can. Well, he put uh, seven touchdowns on Washington when Shaq was playing for the Huskies last year. Look at Adams' numbers, 19-25, 246, a couple of touchdowns, no interceptions. He's been good on the ground. Well, hand off to Benoit, who zigzags his way across the 35-yard line. Kevin, yeah, he's as gifted as anybody in this conference throwing the football. Adams will hand off, and Oregon with a first down. They bring in Royce Freeman. Well, make that Benoit. Adams at 5'10", fakes, runs, slides. And the ball dislodged, but flags are flying. And Vernon Adams is rolling over on his stomach, not getting himself up. He is wobbling. Oh, my. He got popped. He's trying to get his legs under him and having difficulty. The training staff there to attend him. After the play, personal foul with targeting defense number 44. A 15-yard penalty with an automatic first down. The play will be reviewed. And Eastern has a player down as well. See Vernon slide. And, and that's tough. Um, it, it really is. This is a tough play on a defender. You know the rule. It's late in the game. You're trying to create a turnover. Mm -hmm. When you watch Vernon Adams on film, when he was at Eastern or whether he was here throughout this game, he does a lot of that. Sliding at the last second, it's hard on a defender. It's the letter of the law. You cannot lead with the crown of your helmet. It's the proper call, for sure. John Crayfield's called for the personal foul on the targeting call as he came in 
low on Vernon Adams, sliding to the turf. And you're right, Yogi, that's awfully difficult. You want to make an aggressive play, you want to force a turnover. I mean, that's real time. You're trying to make a play. Vernon slides. I mean, that's the, the letter of the law. That's exactly what the penalty is supposed to stop. And as a defender, you, you want to prepare yourself for the quarterback sliding, but it's hard because you're coming full speed, and all of a sudden, your target completely changes his trajectory. And I, I would not think that John Kreifus or anybody in Eastern Washington is trying to be malicious, but you can watch Vernon Adams' helmet slides back and you're just happy to see him walk off and hopefully he'll be all right. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Number 44 is disqualified. So, Kreifel's disqualified and Vernon Adams Jr. going back to the Oregon locker room. I presume his night is done with 9.30 remaining in his ballgame and Oregon leading 54-35. Jeff Lockie now a quarterback the Oregon Ducks. And for Kreifels, he's going to miss the first half of the next game, but Vernon Adams, we also hope he's all right because they got to go on the road to East Lansing. Kreifels, the sophomore from Modesto, motioning to the crowd. He this is just put his hands down to go to the locker room, and I think that's what Bo Baldwin's telling him. Yeah. Now you know yeah, what that, that That's not okay, because that signals to us that it was intentional, and that's an embarrassment yeah. if that's yeah. the truth. And that young man should go to the locker room, and he should be suspended for the next game. And I know Bo Baldwin, that's not what he stands for. That's not what the history of his coaching career or what they do at Eastern Washington, how they've treated the matchup against Vernon Adams. He's been so respectful. Uh -huh. The truth about their relationship, they're incredibly uh, friendly. They talk to each other extremely often. It's not made out to what it is in the media in terms of the hatred from one school against Vernon Adams. So, you know Bo Baldwin hates seeing that more than anyone. That is, is not the classy effort that his team traditionally showcases. And it's an embarrassment. Too bad for that young man. Yeah. He didn't need to demonstrate. Just get to the locker room. So Jeff Lockie steps in. Lockie, of course, did the backup duty to Marcus Mariota, the high school trophy winner for the last couple of years. They hand off to Benoit, and he rumbles across for a first down. And I, Benoit, has been effective tonight. Six feet, 210, sophomore from Phoenix, Arizona. And for Jeff Lockie, you want to talk to the other side. I want to talk about what class stands for. It's been him. I mean, yep. he easily could have become a locker room lawyer, and all of a sudden, could have tried getting people police for him, of being coming the starting quarterback. He never once did that. He went to compete. He tried to get the job, got beat out fairly. And he tipped his hat to Vernon Adams, and I'm just going to keep working, and now he's getting his opportunity in the game. Handoff comes to Benoit. Trying to cut it back. is met by two defenders, and he's knocked down at the 15-yard line. Tony Brooks-James in the lineup now in the backfield. Gets a nice block, cuts to the 10, cuts it back in to the end zone on those two feet. Touchdown, Oregon. Dwayne Stanford springs him with a block. All trying to get reps because they need to be fresh for this offense to roll. you got to have multiple running backs. Aiden Snyder adds the extra point and makes it 61. 35 Oregon, 747 left of the ball game from Eugene. Well, the Duck is uh, doing overtime. A lot of points on the board. 61-35 Oregon, 7.47 to go here in the ballgame. And this Pac-12 football broadcast presented by Bank of the West. Eastern Washington will get the football back as Simba Webster, the freshman, breaks a tackle or two. Tennessee, the redshirt freshman from the state of Washington, Gatorade Player of the Year in Washington in 2013, redshirted last year. Hands off to Williams, another freshman. Scans right, throws left. Tried to just dump it down, but the ball ricochets off the intended receiver's numbers. Mark Helfrich, the head football coach of Oregon, told Lewis Johnson, we're making Cup look like he's all galaxy. 
Well, he has been terrific tonight. West went out with cramps early in the third, and this man, Hennessy, has taken over beautifully. He's flush out of the He's a, a unique athlete in terms of his footwork, his, his initial quits. He can get away, and all of a sudden, if you want to drop eight, he's going to find the seam. He's going to get a first down, get down, and that's what really can kill defense. So I think in the big sky this year, whether he's the quarterback and ideally Jordan West gets healthy and he's all right after the cramps, they got two guys that can lead them to another championship. West continues to walk up and down the sidelines. They give it to Williams again. I think tonight they're going to wish they created some more turnovers. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, they had the opportunities to ball in the other secondary. They're going up against Connor Cook, who I believe is one of the top five, ten quarterbacks in the country. He's a pro-style quarterback. Cup makes the catch. Vernon Adams is back. And I think if for no other reason, just to come back out here and see the end of this game with 540 remaining. That's good, too. See him come back smiling. Hennessy on second and seven. We'll give to the diminutive Jabari Wilson. He's 5'11", maybe, and 200 pounds. He plows ahead for another first down. You know, the other thing is, they didn't get to the quarterback. Just one sack on Jordan West tonight. Yeah, and they're going to want to put some pressure on Connor Cook next week because He's the type of guy, he's a veteran quarterback, right? Put a left early for the National Football League, decided to return to college. But this is an experienced team, a very physical team. They yeah, again go to the ground, Jabari Wilson, a shoe streak. Get knocked down, but he picks up four on the play. Yeah, I think also, too, to, to not make too much about this game and even other games around the country. Michigan State, they struggled with Western Michigan. The majority of college teams don't play as well as people think they should play week one. It's the first time you're playing live, the first time you're seeing real fast tempo. When the rules have changed in college football, and even coaches have adjusted, there's not a lot of scrimmages. We scrimmage once, maybe twice in training camp. There are minimal, if any, two days. Yes, he's flushed, he avoids a tackler, and then secures the ball down there at the 25-yard line. Michigan State coming up next week. Number five, Michigan State beat Western Michigan 37-24 yesterday. Connor Cook, Yogi mentioned 15 to 31 in that ball game, 256 with a couple of touchdowns. I think this schedule too, Kevin, it, it really plays out well for Oregon. I mean, Utah, this place is going to be rock when they play. We all saw what they did against Michigan, but the first half of this season, they should do. They have the ability to be undefeated heading into that game at Arizona State. So, I think with what happened in the North today, with Stanford losing. Oregon's got as good a chance as any to kind of run the table to put themselves in position again to represent the North in the Pac-12 championship game. And, and that was a big expectation, obviously, coming in as well. Beautifully thrown ball. Cooper Cup leaps into the air, and he draws nine guys to him down there at the five-yard line and is still able to stand his ground. Cup has been magnificent tonight. He now has a career high in receptions. That is 14. <laughs> and he is over 200 yards down reception, Joe. And, and he, really what I love about him is his physicality. He's so durable. You know, he never really takes a big hit. He plays as physical as any receiver, you know, we've seen. He, he is a guy who loves the moment. He's got incredible hands. You know, he's a guy you're going to want to follow if you're an Oregon fan all year long. He's going to put up huge numbers. He might end up playing for a while because he's so short-handed and so crisp in his routes. Cup, 14 catches, 239 yards, two TDs. And the pass from Hennessy down to the goal line is broken up. Intended for Bourne. Take a look, see if he caught the rock. Yeah, it was a Yeah, that's not close. the formation to the left and they have movement up front and the flags are flying and Eastern Washington is false start offense number 92 five yard penalty second down that's 11 penalties on Bo Baldwin's Eagles for 82 yards and I think for Bo Baldwin he told us heading into this game he thought it was one of his most talented teams if not his most talented team at Eastern Washington just the depth they have the way they've developed the way they've recruited they're going to look back at this game. They had their opportunities. They could match score for score for the most part, but all those penalties ended up hurting them. Tennessee looking to cut. Beautifully thrown ball to the far corner of the end zone. Touchdown. 
third touchdown reception of the evening for Cooper Cup, who is having a career night against the number seven Oregon Ducks. And what a beautifully thrown ball that was from Hennessy, right on the number. Oh, just soft, wow. the hands above your eyes. That's clinic tape right there. And Bo Baldwin said it. He said, quote, I'd be shocked if he didn't have a huge game when we talked to him earlier this week. And I'll be honest, when I heard this, really? Uh, in my mind, really, they're going up against some of these athletes, these secondary uh, of Oregon. The front seven is going to get some pressure on you. And he's done it. You know, Cooper Cup hats off to you, man. What a game. Yeah, I thought it would be more pressure on the quarterback, Yogi. But, well, a fun ball game to watch here at Autzen Stadium in Eugene. 61-42 the count. The Birds going at it here. The Eagles and the Ducks. 235 remaining in the ball game. This Pac-12 broadcast is presented by Bank of the West. Vernon Adams after getting jolted on the field went back to the locker room. They attended to him. He came back out on Here's the way Vernon Adams evening unfolded. Boy well, started off incredibly well. First drive, touchdown, let him all the way down towards the back shoulder touchdown. Really impressive job, I thought, his command of the offense. Then unfortunately. Takes the what looked like as a cheap shot, especially after the John side of the Kreifus. defender, John Kreifus, yeah. walk off the field. But it's good to see him out here. You know, went to the locker room, probably went through all the pr protocols that the medical staff asked you to go through. And hope he's all right, because you want to see that matchup next week. I mean, this is going to be a matchup the whole country is going to be tuning into. Everybody tuned in tonight to see who Vernon Adams truly was. I think we saw somebody who plays graduate level football, a guy who understands specific situations. And he was in all of them tonight offensively. Two-minute offense, backed up, four-minute offense, sudden change offense, after an explosive play, after the other team made an explosive play. I thought that if there was one positive to really take away is that this entire Oregon team, Vernon Adams specifically, had to go through all the situations necessary in live action. You try to create in practice, but it's really hard to create that type of tempo. And with how many practices, too, you'll be in preparation, right? <laughs> I mean, let's keep in mind. Two and a half weeks? Yeah, I mean, this is college football history, what we witnessed tonight. I mean, how many times does somebody leave a smaller school to take a shot to not just go to a bigger school, but one of the top five schools in the country at the quarterback position, replacing Marcus Mariota, doesn't know the system, doesn't practice with the team until the fifth practice of training camp. No spring, no summer organized workouts, and he wins the job in two weeks and comes out and plays extremely efficiently in his first game. Well, we're seeing Taj Griffin get some touches now, converted to a running back, 5'10", freshman from Powder Springs, Georgia. He's gotten a couple of touches back there. He's a great story, too. I mean, he got banged up in high school. You know, when you get injured in high school before your senior year, you're always nervous. Is a team going to pull the scholarship? Mark Helfrich called immediately, said that's not going to happen. His brother's playing DB now here as well, former QB. Look at him out in the open field. He's got him into the 50, turn the burners to the 30. He tapped in the 20, and he is hauled down inside the 10-yard line. Taj Griffin. He goes 61 yards on that burst. We talked about the embarrassment of riches here in Oregon. They just come in waves. Do you think he was sitting on the sideline saying, just give me my chance? He saw Tony Brooks James. He saw Benoit. Obviously, Royce Freeman just wanted his chance. And this is a guy, he's a 4 3 40 guy, 45 inch vertical leap. I mean, he's a dynamic athlete. Expect to see him now that clearly they burned his redshirt. He's going to get some play as the season goes on. 487 yards on the ground for Oregon. Lockie will take a knee, and that will be that. You know, on top of that, we didn't see Charles Nelson tonight. A highly valued wide receiver. He may have had an injury situation, but uh, we'll look for him possibly next week at Michigan State. Oregon wins this one, 61-42. to behind Vernon Adams. The era of Vernon Adams ended at Eastern Washington, and for one year it begins tonight here at Oregon. And it's good to see, look at the two best friends, Vernon Adams and Cooper Cup's winning. These coaches, great respect for one another. Now they've built their program. All in all, I think tonight's game was great for Oregon. They're getting to refocus, especially in the back end, heading to East Lansing, go up against Michigan State a week from now and for Vernon Adams they've got their quarterback Kevin this young man I think he's gonna be a special player here and for Eastern Washington boy they're a team that bears watching they're gonna be very exciting there in Cheney Washington Cooper Cup was magnificent tonight career highs receptions yards and he had the three touchdowns through the air as well they got a couple of quarterbacks who can get it done they really do all in all first week in a college football packed off after dark Vernon Adams 
Tune in, hopefully he's healthy for next week. It's gonna be sweet when they take on the Spartans. We had a lot of fun doing the double dip here in the state of Oregon in Corvallis last night and Eugene tonight. Yogi Roth, Lewis Johnson, Kevin Calabro, David Feldman, our producer, Thompson Tersky, our director from Eugene. That will do it from here.